Hi, welcome back to my channel. So happy to have you here. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Google Tasks. Now, Google Tasks is one of my new favorite things. And I'm going on a journey this year in 2024 to see what can I replace in my business with tools Google already has. So stay tuned as I share with you my favorite parts of Google Tasks and a little bonus at the end. My name is Adrienne Farrow, and I am your Google BFF, a Google Tools Specialist and a Digital Project Specialist. And I'm here to share with you all about Google Tasks. Now, I am known for having shiny object syndrome. You might be similar to me where you want to try all the tools, and then when you get into using those tools, those tools don't work for you, so you pick another one. So this year, I'm really focusing on Simplifying and streamlining. Those are two of my key business words for this year. Simplifying and streamlining. And if I am a Google Tools specialist, why not just really lean into the Google Tools I already have? So let's go into Google Tasks and see what it's all about. So there are two ways to get into Google Tasks. One is directly through Calendar. This is my favorite way because it is actually brand new and it makes it so easy to get into Google Tasks. All you need to do is go to this little check mark right up here at the top of where it says switch to tasks. And now you have a whole new tasks dashboard. Now you can also get into tasks through the sidebar. The sidebar are on most Google tools. So if I go here to a new tab and open up Gmail, over here on the side is Google tasks. So I can get into Google tasks from any Google application. Back here to calendar, let's talk a little bit about how Google Tasks is structured. So it's similar to a lot of to-do lists like Todoist and some of the other to-do aspects like a Notion or other task management areas. It is a very simplified version. For me, it works well. For you, it might not. But one of the things I really like is its native integration with Google Calendar. We will get to that in a second. Okay, so here we can create new lists and new tasks. So here, if I put in, let's say, I wanna to remember to answer emails. And so I can choose to see what day is going to be on. I'm gonna to say today, what time, maybe I want 1030. I can do an all day task if that is something that I need to help me remember to do something that particular day, but it's not at a specific time. And then I can choose to have it be a repeating task or a just a singular task. So if I need a description, um, I can put one here. One of the things I like to use descriptions for is links. If there's a link I need to refer back to for that particular task, I put it in here. And then this is what list it goes on. So let's put this on the My Task list. Here we go, answer emails today at 10.30. Now we can also star tasks. Starring tasks, put it in this starred menu so that you can really see those priority tasks right away. Another thing to note is you can do subtasks. So if you want to go here to the three dots, you can do add a subtask. So maybe there are particular emails I need to respond to. So respond to OBM's email. And then maybe I need to go and do another subtask and it is respond to bookkeeper's email. And then those ones, those subtasks can also have a specific date and time corresponding with them or details. The only time the subtasks don't really work is if you have a, we'll just do a test task here. If you have a recurring task. So if I put this for one day, we're going to say, so it repeats every day at 12 and then it never ends. Um, you can also choose a date that it ends or after a specific number of occurrences, which is really cool. You can choose that as well. But here, if I go to this recurring task that happens daily at 12, I don't have the option to do a subtask. So just to note, um, that is one feature I hope that they add because I was trying to do my morning routine and I do specific things every morning, but I wanted that like reminder of, you know, and I could check it off once I've done each of those tasks. So unfortunately that's not a feature of Google Tasks yet. Hopefully we can get them to do that. So I'm gonna do delete here. Okay, 
we can create lists. And so you can create as many different lists as you want. So some of the different lists you could do is by the specific projects you're working on. So you could have a website, um, website list. You could have a finance list. You could have a list that's specific to your course. You could have a list that is for your kids. You could have a list that is, let's do one more, a list that is for your social media content. Okay, so now we have our different lists and they're all here as well. We can reorganize those. So website could be first and maybe I need social media content to come over here and go in front of website. So you can reorganize them however you want. And then in whatever order you put it here will be the order that it is here. And you can collapse that list area if you don't want to see all the list. One of the things that I recommend is my task is great, but I like to have an inbox. And what I do is I put any new tasks that I make either on the computer or on the application on the phone. I will show that or talk about that in a little bit. So that is a great way of just having a quick way to put in new tasks and then I can move them to other areas. So say I am reminding myself um, Instagram reel for Saturday. And then I can take this drag it over here to that social media content area. And maybe I need a reminder to review finances. And that is a reoccurring task every week on Mondays. Okay. You can also determine where it goes when you put in a new task. So you can go to review finances and then we go to 11 a.m. every Friday. You can determine what list it goes to right here. So you can put that on the finance list so it goes over there. And for some reason in on the desktop version, oh here it is. So one of the things you can also do is you can move it right here to whatever list. So you can click those three dots and you can go okay so these are going to be on my work tasks. So it's a really easy way of taking just doing a brain dump of the different tasks that you need. And then maybe at the end of the day, then you put them in the list that you want them to be. Now let's go back to calendar and let's see where these um, tasks are on our calendar. So we have answer emails today at 1030. We have review finances every Friday, I believe, if I remember correctly. And this one doesn't have a date. So that one won't be on our calendar. So if we go over here, here are our tasks. So we have the all day task up here at the top. So we can click on it. We can see that this is the task, the date, what list it lies on, and we can mark it completed. We can also edit it directly within calendar if we need to. And then, so say I've completed it for today, I can complete it right there and then it will go away here. I will show you how to make it disappear completely in a second. Here is your tasks list here. So if you don't wanna see it, you can remove it and then they should go away. Yep, there they are, they are now they're gone. But if I wanna, bring them back, I can bring them back. So if it's distracting for the tasks to be up there, you can dismiss the view pretty easily. Now here on the three dots, if you don't like the default blue, you can change it to whatever color makes you feel the happiest. Um, remember that these are tasks you're gonna see a lot, so you might want to make it a pretty color. Now let's go here to settings. You are going to have the option of, let's go here to, I believe, let's scroll down here and find it. We are looking for, right here, view options. So if you want to show completed tasks, that's the default that we have right now. That's where the line's gonna go through to show that it's been completed. But if not, you can take that away and the settings will save automatically and we'll go back. And now that completed task is gone. So it's a great way to clean up your calendar as well to show those completed tasks. I really like this native integration with Google Calendar because I use my Google Calendar all the time. I look at it all the time. And so seeing those tasks directly there will remind me of things that I need to do. Here on the sidebar is where those tasks also lie. So you can go through the different 
um, list right here. So it's a different format. This is the older format that they had that you can have things in here, but it's a great way if I'm here over in Gmail and there's something that I want to remember, I can quickly add a task right here. Or if there's like an email I need to respond to, I can just grab an email and drop it right over here to make a new task. And maybe that's an email I need to respond to or um, really remember. That's a great way of doing it. Um, you can also find this in Google Slides. Let's pull it up. Oh, we just need to get into a new slide. So it's right over here on that sidebar, right there is your Google Tasks, and it will be in all of your other ones, including Google Sheets. The side, side panel is not showing there, but there's Tasks, Google Docs. Right there. And... Google Drive, here's Google Drive right there. So that's a really great way of being able to keep track of your tasks throughout all of the different um, areas. My bonus tip is to download the Google Tasks app. So in the Google Tasks app, you have the same functionalities as the actual desktop version. One of the things I absolutely love is there is a widget and the widget can live on your home screen and then you can get see your, your tasks right away. It will go by list. So I have my inbox as my main screen one. So I can just quickly add tasks as I'm thinking about it. And then you can also have those notifications go off. So you get the notifications on your phone as well as your Google Calendar desktop. So everything just really works together. Once Google added that tasks area up in the corner of Google Calendar, it was a game changer for me, honestly. Before I had not really been using Google Tasks. It wasn't something that really worked for me. But now that it's natively right there in calendar, I'm using it all the time. So I canceled Todoist and I was able to really just hone in on using Google as much as I can this year. So give Google Tasks a try and see if it works for you. Now, if you want to stay in touch and find out more Google tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe to this video and like it, comment down below if there was something that it was an aha moment or something new that you learned. And go ahead and go follow me over on Instagram at the Adrian Farrow for more little tips and tricks to save you clicks. Take care and I can't wait to see you in the next video.